Hello, my name is BJ Paris. Welcome to Tapping Into His Treasures. How is everybody? I hope you're doing well. I'm doing well. Today we're going to talk about prayer. And um, I'm not going to read scriptures as I sometimes do. Um, just going to talk about it a little bit and then I'm going to share a bunch of personal testimonies. Because mm -hmm. That's what we started out with 10 years ago, was testimonies, and I love them so much. I'd love to put them on Facebook, and I know you guys love them too. And when I came, when I got saved years ago, uh, the testimonies are what really drew me in, drew me into uh, church and the body of Christ in the Bible, uh, was the testimonies. So I'm not apologizing for it. And uh, one prayer that, that just got answered, it just happened not even five minutes ago. Okay, so let's just pray and then I'll tell you about it. All right. Father, we just come before you and ask that you uh, anoint me as I share these testimonies with the viewers and um, may people be quickened and uh, do as I try to do from time to time, put up those antennas so I can really listen, be sensitive to you and to really listen and to watch and see what you're doing. And um, because sometimes you do things, Lord, and we're kind of scattered doing this and that, and we don't pay attention. But we want to pay attention to give you the glory and the honor that you deserve. So, so I'm going to get down to the testimonies in just a minute. So God's word is so much to say about prayer. We've all prayed, be it out loud or silently from our heart. We get excited when God answers our prayers. We are comforted when we are heavily burdened and we know that God bends his ear to listen to us. The book of Matthew, excuse me, tells us that when two or more of us agree in prayer together that God will hear and answer us. That's a wonderful promise, isn't it? We are taught that the power of prayer uh, that prayer is powerful and empowers us. And Jesus taught the disciples and his followers the Lord's Prayer, which we say most weeks, don't we, together. Many of the Psalms are prayers to God. There are many prayers throughout the Old and New Testaments. Sarah prayed for a child, remember? Abraham's wife, Sarah. God didn't grant her the desire of her heart when she was young but waited until it would be biologically impossible to conceive a child and blessed her with the baby when she was an old woman. <laughs> Not something. And then you remember Hannah, she, was, she prayed for a child. Well, uh, her husband's other wives had children and would make fun of her and she was wanting a baby pretty bad. So she poured her heart out to God. And she told God that if he would allow her to get pregnant. She would give the first her first child over to uh, his service in the temple, temple of the Lord. And then God blessed her with, after she he allowed her to become pregnant, and he blessed her with a child, and she gave him over. And then he gave her several more babies. God bless her. And let's see. Queen Esther, remember, had all of her people pray and fast so that their race would not be annihilated. And God answered their prayers in fasting by having Haman, the one who wanted them all destroyed, hung on the gallows. Yep, God came through. The prophets all prayed for, for the people who were rebelling, rebelling against God. The Lord knows that King David poured his heart out in prayer many times over. He was even suicidal and prayed his heart out. And there are hundreds of prayers recorded in God's Word. So today I'm going to share a few of my personal ones. Uh, what did I do with my book? Wait a second. I'm going to be reading some verbatim from um, one of the books that I wrote about a while ago. Uh, but the thing that just now happened, wait till you hear this, I'm still in shock over it. I went to do this show about an hour, an hour and a half ago, and my camera froze. I have little Nikon, uh, let's see, Coolpix, Nikon Coolpix, and I've been using it for years, and it's treated me very well. 
I've done hundreds of shows on it. So anyway, I'm like, I plugged it in. I thought maybe it's the battery. So I plugged it in for a long time and I still couldn't get that thing, the shutter thing pushed back in. And so I finally went on um, on the computer and I looked up the, the Nikon Coolpix site and I was pricing them. I thought, I'm going to have to get a new camera. I need to get the, this show in the mail in two days. You know, I'm on a deadline every week. And uh, so that created a whole bunch of problems of its own because I don't want to go into a store. I don't want to go in Walmart or anyplace else. I even pick up my groceries outside so I don't have to go in. And I didn't want to put that on my grocery list because who wants to have somebody else pick out a, uh, an item for over $100? I don't mind bananas and carrots and stuff like that, but not a $100 item, more than 100 So I just didn't know what to do. So then I went on YouTube uh, and I just typed in the name of the camera and then it was frozen. And I started to read uh, what they had to say and things that people wrote in. It was like uh, everybody was talking to each other by text and all that. Not text, but comments. And I read where somebody said they took the battery out. And I said, hey, that's an idea. So sure enough, I took the battery out and the thing, uh, the shutter went in. So here I am. Not even five minutes after this happened, here I am and the camera's working. I don't have to buy a new camera, which is a blessing. You know, I, I thought, well, it couldn't have happened at a better time because I just got my stimulus check two days ago. So at least I had the money. I wouldn't have had it otherwise. So, uh, so now I don't have to spend the money on the camera. Praise the Lord. Oh, but to tie it in with the, our theme today of prayer, I was trying to do this, all this fixing on my own without even praying. And I finally stopped and I said to myself, what am I doing? I should have prayed immediately. I prayed to God and that's when it happened within just two or three minutes after, the, after I prayed. So praise Jesus. Okay. So uh, the first one I'm going to uh, share with you about God answering prayer. And God loves it when we come to him in prayer so that he can answer. That's, the, that's his style. So uh, it was about my mother's uh, passing into eternity in 2007. And my sister had been uh, taking care of her because we would alternate care. Every, I would have her for two months, my sister would have her for two months. But all of her uh, belongings and where she actually lived was at my sister's house. Um, her bed was there and her basketball team banner was on the wall, Yukon Huskies and all that. All that. So anyway, uh, it got to the point that she couldn't stay there anymore. So my sister put her in a health center and I was living, I don't know if I was in Baltimore or Maine at the time, probably Maine. I was, I was in, I was in Maine at the time. Okay. So uh, I went down and I stayed with my mom for a week in the nursing home and she was failing, failing. I mean, at the beginning of the week, I actually took her to a diner for lunch, and by the end of the week, uh, she was failing big time. So anyway, uh, I was there alone with her, and my sister and brother-in-law uh, lived. And then the next town over, it only took them 12 minutes to get there. And I, um, I, I called the nurse's station, and I told them uh, that my mother's uh, vitals were slowing up a lot. If they would want to come in and check every so often. And I've dealt with death so much of my life because uh, as a CNA and uh, volunteering in hospice for a long time, uh, and living alone and not having any family to tam to, uh, they would have me on call for those who were dying that didn't have family. So uh, I must have held the hands of 25 people as they were dying over the years, you know. So anyway, I just thought I would be okay, even if I was by myself. Um, but my sister and brother-in-law, they did leave their house and they got caught in traffic. So I was there alone with my mom for a longer period of time than I expected to be. And then uh, what I did not expect to happen, happened. 
and I wasn't I wasn't okay with it and it was because it wasn't a client it wasn't somebody in the hospital said it was my mom and then I started to go into hyperventilation which I was prone to and beforehand I had even asked my head pastor if he would pray that that wouldn't happen to me so anyway here I was going into hyperventilation and just before that my mother started moving around in the bed because the, her body temperature was starting to lower and I was rubbing her arms and everything talking softly to her and uh, of course when I started to have my own symptoms uh, I couldn't do that anymore so I started to get scared to death and then I prayed to God and I said I, I knew in my spirit that if I trusted my pastor to pray that this wouldn't happen I couldn't give in to those symptoms I had to exercise faith in the prayer he was praying for me and God was behind all the prayers. And so I prayed right then and there and took a stand against the enemy. And everything just dissipated. All the symptoms went away. And if that wasn't enough, uh, my sister and brother-in-law, after they got stuck in traffic and they finally got to the health center, I was on one side of the bed. My sister was on the other side of the bed. We each held one of her hands. Five minutes after my sister got there, my mother passed into eternity. My mother waited for her, and God allowed that to happen. So that was a wonderful example of answered prayer. Praise be to God. And um, I have a great testimony about my grandson on the ATV. When he was just a little fella, um, <clears throat> I think he was 10 years old, and um, for two weeks, I was getting what I would call signs, or God was trying to get my attention about my grandson. His name was TJ. His real name was Anthony, but we called him TJ for Tony Jr. And for two whole weeks, I'd look, open the Bible, and I had all my grandson's names on the side, the border of the Bible, all my grandkids' names, uh, to pray for them. And so God gave me this uh, this one verse. The first time he was trying to get my attention in the verse, I believe it was Leviticus 2.19, and it said, Stretch out your hands for the lives of your children. And so I took that to mean my grandchildren as well. They're my children too. And I didn't know which one. I just covered all of them in prayer. But that's the one that he, he was the one that God put on my mind for, for his life. And it just kept getting stronger and stronger over two weeks. And one night on a Wednesday night service at church, after the service was over, I actually asked the a pastor if he would pray for my grandson with the whole body of believers. That's how dead serious I was that something was going to happen. So he did, God bless him. You know, some pastors, I don't know if they would appreciate that, you know, when they were still up on stage preaching. Um, so he did. And the whole body prayed for my grandson. So th three days after that, that Saturday, uh, I was driving. Uh, I had two church girls go with me to our annual convention down in Baltimore. And we were on the main turnpike around 2.30 in the morning. And all of a sudden, heading south, and all of a sudden, as we slowed up, as we approached the uh, toll booth, I saw the license plate of the car in front of us. And the initials on the, his license plate were A-G-C. And I just started hollering. I'm going, oh my gosh, those are my grandson's initials. His real name is Anthony, so it was Anthony George Krauss. And I knew God was speaking to me. It couldn't have been any more evident. So anyway, we went on to Baltimore for a few days and then we stopped in Connecticut at my parents on the way back. The girls took a walk down to the beach because my mother lived near the beach. <clears throat> and I was at my mom's visiting with her and the phone rang and it was my oldest son, DJ's dad. He goes, Mom, 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 Mom. And he's trying to talk to me and I'm, I'm saying, Tony, slow down. Sounds like... Uh, 
hydroglyphics is what's coming out of your mouth. So he slowed down and he proceeded to tell me that they had gone on an ATV weekend in Massachusetts with their ATV. And they met some guy from New York who had a brand new, powerful ATV uh, that did like 40 miles an hour or something like that. And my 10-year-old grandson, who's was always helping his father with his uh, automotive business and stuff like that, and always uh, um, repairing motorcycles and driving the ATV. Uh, so he was used to that kind of thing at that young age. Uh, so he asked the guy if he could drive his machine, and the guy could tell he was a big rugged kid and everything, so he let him. Well, he picked up too much speed for a 10-year-old, and he flipped the ATV and it landed right on top of him, that 500-pound machine. Everybody called uh, 911, and my sons, my son, uh, I guess, was working on adrenaline at that particular point. And my son lifted that 500-pound machine all by himself off of his son. And all that he got was bruises. He never broke any bones or anything. And when he told me that, I says, Tony, I have a story to tell you. And I proceeded to tell him about what God was giving me for two solid weeks and not all the prayer that I had to cover that boy. And that is what saved his life. So um, I just thought you would enjoy hearing that story as I give God the glory again and again. I'll never stop giving him glory for that. So on to the next one. Uh, I'm going to... Um, read a couple from uh, one, the last book that I had published. And the first one is, on page 57, Sam's Finances. I'm going to read it to you verbatim. And this, this was a prayer that I had prayed. I had my whole church body pray for this young man also. Um, I visited him in jail as a, a jail volunteer for over 20 years. He was like one of my kids. And he had a hard time when he got out. Uh, readjusting to society and so forth. So here's the uh, here's the uh, testimony. In early 2013, I prayed with my friend Sam, and had my church body pray for God to do a miracle with his finances. I reminded him that God is full of surprises, and I'm reminding you today as well. He wasn't buying it. He was so depressed. A few days after. I had everyone pray for Sam. I called him to see how things were going. He reported to me that his niece had called his deceased brother's wife, who inherited his brother's money, and told her that if her father, Sam's brother, were alive, that he would have helped Sam. His sister-in-law agreed to give my friend a sizable lump sum of money, as I recall it was $5,000, which would help him with a security deposit for an apartment and other pressing expenses and to get on his feet. So how many times do radical things like this happen? Nothing is too big for God. Isn't that a phenomenal testimony? Who, would, who was going to come up and give somebody that just got released from prison? $5,000. It just doesn't happen, folks. So let's see what's my next one here. Uh, let's see. Oh, here's one about my girlfriend. I won't give you her real name, but I'll call her Esther, okay? And this is what happened. <clears throat> okay, Esther's job. Is one of my. I can't see with those glasses. Hold on. Ta da. On one of my friend Esther's visits, we discussed her losing her job. She had applied for a variety of positions with different companies, yet securing, un securing employment seemed hopeless. Too few jobs, too many applicants. Her husband ran a business out of their house, but contemplated the belief that 
Family and business did not mix, so she did not dare approach the subject of working for him. She and I brought it up to God when we prayed before she left to go home, however. We prayed precisely that her husband would at least give her a chance to work in his office. The following day, Esther emailed me to tell me that she acquired a job. God had come through and her husband hired her as his secretary. And that was like probably seven years ago. And she's still working for him. They work together as a team. Isn't that wonderful? Well, hold on. Oh, I had another one I wanted to share with you. Where did that go? I don't know where it was, so I'll just tell you that from my memory, okay? Um, I had a friend and her mother stop by my house one time when I lived in Brunswick. Oh, here it is. A mom and her daughter make up. A friend of mine who I connected with after over 30 years came to visit me one day, during which time she opened up to me about being estranged from her daughter for many years. She wept as she expressed her love for the young woman. Her heartache was weighty from the pressing situation. God came over us and we found ourselves amidst a Holy Spirit visitation in my living room that day. I began to pray at once laying hands on my friend in proxy for her daughter. I prayed for a spirit of reconciliation to come to them both. The release of heaviness to my friend was instantaneous. We rested in the finished work of the Lord pertaining to the prayer that I prayed. Within a few weeks, I received the call that I expected. The reconciliation had taken place. To God be the glory. Isn't that wonderful? Let me check my time here. Okay, so I still have time for one more. Okay, that's 65. <clears throat> my friend's son. <clears throat> I have... Oh, here it is, my friend's son. Okay. My friend's son was stopped by the police for erratic driving and charged with OUI, which is operating under intoxication. Because my friend is a child of God and prays nonstop for her son, whether he was right or wrong did not make a difference as to whether God would show up in the situation because he had a praying mother, okay? My friend emailed me to tell me that her son's boss, wait to hear this, that her son's boss thought he was a good kid and wanted to do all he could to help. The employer actually went with her to meet a lawyer the following morning. He also posted bail of either, it was either $500 or $1,000. That's a lot of money. He said he would have her son work it off. He told my friend that he had always wanted a younger brother and was glad to help. Isn't that remarkable? I mean, God is something else, isn't he? Wow. Wow. Oh, it's on page 67. Actually, this one here isn't, isn't a mi misfit. We have a story about being a misfit, but I don't know what page it's on. Oh, wait a minute. Here it is, 75. 75. This isn't really an answer to prayer, but I but I just, I just wanted to share it because I shared it on Facebook this morning and everybody loved it. So after spending some time with people who made a number of insinuations about my beliefs and my church. I said to God, Lord, I feel like such a misfit when I am with these people. A minute later, I turned on Christian TV to clear my mind. As happens from time to time, someone was preaching who I had a hard time handling, and without even listening to his subject, I was quick to pick up the remote to change the channel. Don't change the channel, leave it on, is what I heard God say to me in my spirit. And it was loud and clear in my spirit. So these were the next words that came from the preacher's mouth. As soon as I looked and listened to the preacher, these were the very next words that came from his mouth. 
and he was hollering and pointing a finger and he was very animated. Okay, this is what he said. So you think you're a misfit? Which is what I said to God. So you think you're a misfit, do you? Well, I'll tell you what. Jesus came to make you a misfit. He didn't come to bring peace. He came to bring a sword. Family member against family member. <laughs> so anyway, I posted that on Facebook today. And one of my girlfriends wrote a comment to me. And she goes, BJ, you're my favorite misfit. <laughs> Funny. Well, so... So we, um, we did mention that Jesus taught the disciples and his followers to say the Lord's Prayer. And that was the prayer that they should pray over and over again. And we'll say that right now with you bowing your heads with me. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And um, and God bless uh, all the viewers and all their families, Father, each man, woman, and child, and young adult and teenager. Yes, Lord. Bless each one, Father. Help them where help is needed. Heal where healing is needed. Yes, Lord. So thanks for watching. God bless you and God bless yours. God keep you and God keep yours. Till next time, bye-bye for now.